Conditions. Up next, we have an incredibly important panel about the existing and needed measurement approaches to value in-game advertising uniquely, and it's presented by our friends over at Frameplay. The in-game environment is a great way to attract an audience, and if you're in that world right now, or you're interested in it at all, this conversation is for you. Feel free to engage in the chat box, take some notes, and I'll see you back here soon. We're so excited today to bring this panel of experts to you, talking about the gaming industry, something we all love to talk about. My name is Carrie Tilds. I'm the Chief Strategy and Operations Officer for Frameplay, and we have an incredible panel here today with us. And I'd love to just quickly highlight and introduce who they are first. I'll go through a little bit of a background on why we're all here, and then we'll get right into the questions. So I hope that's okay with you. The first person that we're going to talk to today is uh, Zoe Soon. She is the VP of the Experience Center at the IAB. Among many things that Zoe does is she runs the Gaming and Esports Committee. It's a new committee that's thinking about the consumer behaviors, how they've changed, and how the experiences will be, you know, affect the future standards of tomorrow. We'll also talk to Mishi McDuff. So excited to have her here. She's from 1336 Studios, an incredible game development studio, working on all sorts of future forward games. Uh, her, their first game was a viral hit, uh, early access on Steam in August of 2020. Yeah. Uh, and continues to be one. Uh, they are building, it's called Gridiron, if you want to look it up. Uh, they're building a multiplayer sports platform. Uh, so we're so excited to get her perspective. And then finally, but certainly not least, Sarah Stringer, who has an incredible background in the advertising industry overall but is at Dentsu Media currently. She's leading the partnerships for media for all of the US. And one of the roles that she plays is to find these amazing partners that can provide innovation and value to her customers. And she's been an incredible advocate in the gaming industry. So we're excited to talk to her too. So uh, overall, before we get into our panel, I just wanted to set things up for us. Our goal today, really, is to impress upon everybody that we have to think about the gaming industry uniquely. It's not just something, you know, another digital channel. It's its own channel that we need to celebrate. That's why we have representatives here from the gaming industry, from the advertising industry, and from industry standards overall to talk about this topic. Listen, the most exciting thing we love to talk about in our jobs is content. Content and creative are king. And, you know, the gaming industry certainly is about content. It's the most beautiful, immersive experience that you can have. One of the things we also get excited about, at least I do, is talking about how do we value that content. If we don't value it in the right way, then we can't really engage with it in the most meaningful ways for our brands. In the end, ultimately serving those game developers. So let's get excited about valuing this incredible channel in the most unique way. The other thing that the industry is kind of dealing with right now, you know this already, if you're at all, you know, your head isn't under a rock or in a hole, is that there's a lot of disruption going on in measurement. You know, we have to be privacy first. The industry expects it, the consumer expects it, and actually in the gaming channel, privacy is not only valued, it's 100% expected. So with cookies and IDs and mobile and any sort of measurement that's you know, being reconsidered, we need to take the opportunity to explore what advertising in the gaming space means, especially where it comes to intrinsic in-game ads. Those ads that are placed inside the game when the game developer like Mishi and others are developing those beautiful pieces of artwork, technically advanced and content rich experiences, we gotta get this right. We cannot fail. We have to put the gamer first. 
One last thought, and I definitely have talked about this before, and it's worth noting. Listen, when we developed the digital standards for banners and even video, we didn't use newspaper standards or TV measurement approaches. We considered those things very differently and uniquely. And when digital audio came on the scene, that also didn't use you know, terrestrial radio uh, in terms of measurement standards. Social had its own uniqueness, and so did the mobile channel. So why would we treat gaming any differently? We have to look at gaming uniquely. We have to value it uniquely. Sure, let's borrow some of those standards that we have already you know, developed that can apply, but let's definitely put the gamer in the center and think critically about where we need to make some new standards in order to properly value this channel. So with that being said, I'd love to get the panel up and running, less about me, more about them, uh, because they're here to represent, you know, the passion of this industry and what we, I think we can all do. So Sarah, let's start with you as the advertising media, you know, executive in the room. Um, what are the tried and true methods that are used to value, let's say, current digital advertising today is just kind of a basis level for us to understand and to compare to the gaming industry and what we might need to do differently. Yeah, I mean, if you look at, I think the, the easiest translation to make when we're looking at intrinsic in-game advertising, um, I guess would be kind of like banner ads, which let's be honest, in the world of advertising, we don't necessarily view that as the sexiest of, uh, of units, but obviously still incredibly important when it comes to um, any type of advertising uh, like rounded out plan. So we look at things like, um, on target reach, viewability, as really some of the core components of how we look at success um, for those ads. Now, obviously with the, the cookie-less future and what we're looking at right now, context has always been an important part of what we've been looking at um, you know, for advertising for a very long time, but we're now re-looking at context um, with an all new importance, understanding that people don't wanna feel like they're being stalked around the internet or being profiled based on demographic, demographic data of which some cases we are bucketing people wrong. And in other cases, it's not even reflective of how someone views themselves as an individual. So the joy of looking at context and places where people would be open to us advertising um, is something that we're, we're revisiting and looking into. And when it comes to in-game advertising, we know that the mindset people are in is completely different from say someone scrolling through mindlessly in social versus you know the energetic lean forward you know very engaged um, uh, environment of gaming so when we're looking at how we're looking at intrinsic um, ad placements there are a number of different ways that we can start looking at the impact of that and you know things like attention dwell time um, and, you know, in some cases, even attention data. So we're seeing more and more come up around measurement, um, around things like eye tracking, because we genuinely know that someone is having um, uh, a great time, but also they're highly engaged in that moment. So there's a whole load of um, new metrics that we're looking at in traditional advertising that is now also being applied and tweaked for the um, in-game uh, opportunity as well. Oh, I love that you just said that because I make the joke that, you know, it's really hard to fold laundry when you're playing a video game, you know, when you're in it and, you know, you're playing football or something like that. Um, you're, you're totally going to, you know, get tackled if, you, if you're if you trying to fold laundry while you're multitasking. I'm not sure it's even possible. Maybe it is. I don't think like, so. <laughs> maybe it's some sort of channel. Where like, no, so you need really. one of those robots from CES to help you out. Maybe. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so you, you mentioned, you know, some of the things around impression and, and uh, certainly I think audience verification is another one that's important to understand. I'm trying to reach this audience, you know, I'm, uh, is it the same audience? And I think we can really translate some of those things uh, between the channels. But talk to me a bit about, you know, what you think is, is missing the most um, in the intrinsic in-game advertising space. We've coined this phrase, phrase intrinsic to be inside of or natural what, aside from eye tracking or some of those attention metrics um you, you know viewability is measured differently so do you it's it's missing right now uh, i can't use the current viewability standards um do, do you think that's going to be a need longer term I do i think we're looking for more ways that we can translate the impact across different types of media so i do think that you know, this is a, a topic that comes up a lot day to day around the impact that, say, 
you know, a pre-roll on OTT has versus a social asset, you know, even a GIF versus then how much time someone might be spending, say, for instance, playing a football soccer game where you have, you know, rolling banner ads that, you know, essentially reflect the same as a, you know, a real life experience, but digitally. And I think what we're looking at are different ways um, that we can create, I guess, a scoring. So we can try and create something that feels like a, um, a translation point between them. So at Dentsu, we do have an extensive work stream um, called the attention economy, where we're looking at trying to create those translation points around different types of media and how we understand the nuances of that particular platform and how we then gauge how leaned in is someone in that environment are they just in the room and experiencing something versus are their eyes on the screen versus really when it comes to gaming, like, you know, they're playing the game. So what you're going to find is that by having those translation points, we'll be able to start comparing the likes of what does what is the contribution an in-game um, moment will have versus something that might be lean back, might just be on in the background, and we can really start creating a, a value proposition around that. So I think it's a really exciting time. And if anything, I think some of the technologies we're starting to see come out from the game industry at, at how you're looking at measurement will end up being translated elsewhere in more traditional media as well. Yeah, for sure. I love I love that. And I love, you know, certainly I think it's an innovation moment for a large organization like Dentsu to think about um, having a bespoke approach to this, especially when um, you value it in a, in a significant way and the standards, you know, need to be refreshed. So Zoe, speaking of standards, as the VP of the Experience Center at the IAB, it's something I know you certainly care about and you're working on. Um, one of the things is the is is you're the, you know, the overall leader for the gaming and esports committee, new, newly reformed this year. Um, the IAB published the in-game standards first in 20, 2009. So 2009, to get the date right. According to the then chair, good friend Dave Madden, um, was at EA, now at Simul Media. The group spent a significant amount of time going through all of those um, all of those standards to get it right. And I certainly agree with him. I wasn't there, but I've read them. I think they're they're quite they're quite good. Definitely need to address them again because their nuances have changed. Um, just as a side note, the IAB viewability standards uh, for display and mo and video were then subsequently developed after that. So it was a very forward thinking group. So um, what do you think about uh, refreshing those standards? Do you think we're gonna do that as an industry? Um, uh, is, that on the, is that on the docket? What's, what's going on with that? Definitely, uh, it's increasingly coming up in our conversations about the OMSDK work. There's specific game requirements coming up. Uh, and I think there are things that are changing. So there's been a, a definitely a gap and a couple of things that have held back these stands developing, which are shifting. So two things, one on the publisher side, I think game developers and publishers have been reticent to jeopardize the, the player first experience. Uh, game developers are like artists, right? The content is king. They really want to protect that environment. Um, and, and their subscription revenue, right? But that's changing as technology technology gets better and in-app um, contextually beautiful, you know, additive ads can get served natively. Uh, I think that's changing and we're seeing more publishers lean in. So it's 1336 Studios, Frameplay's partnership with Miniclip, we're seeing that shift. Um, and the second thing is I think brands have had a misconception about who gamers are. You know, there's this misconception that they're 22 year olds in hoodies in the basement playing, uh, but that's just not true. So I think Activision Blizzard did a recent study that showed 70% of moms play games. They just don't identify as gamers. Right. Uh, I'm also seeing newcomers on the space like Twitch changing, like, you know, with games are increasingly becoming a place where younger generations congregate online. Um, and, you know, recently WPP's partnership with Anzu, with champions like Sarah Densu. So we're seeing that shift on the brand side as well. Uh, and the last thing, you know, games is one of the few channels that did well, did better out of the pandemic. Um, people turned to it when live sports and concert events went away. Uh, so I think we're going to see that behavior stick as this channel just kind of grow growing in momentum and speed. So definitely time to refresh those standards and, and get ahead. 
I love that. And I, I think you, you know, we've been talking about the fact that um, I'm lucky enough to represent the IAB, um, frame play at the IAB UK uh, gaming committee. And I think they're equally as interested in all of the things that you were just talking, talking about. And one of the things that we're working on, and it seems really basic, but the most important part is, is this taxonomy work. You know, what do you, what do you call a, a, a gamer? Are they hardcore? Are they midcore? Um, are, are they casual? Are they hyper casual? And making sure that not only do we know what to call them, but that, that they're plumbed into the infrastructure of all the systems, whether they be measurement systems, buying systems, and and whatnot. So, being that we're working on that with the IAB UK, do you do you does the IAB US and the IAB UK kind of uh, share knowledge, if you will, and will you be kind of leaning into that work, or how, how does that work uh, across the pond? Definitely. Um, I think we want to leverage the work that's already been done, that it's, which sounds very collaborative, uh, and we also want standards to be global to get real scale, right? The, the internet doesn't really have bounds, so uh, we're fortunate enough that Tech Lab, an affiliate company, is, is global, so we definitely um, want to make sure that we're all talking and, and we're on the same page. Awesome. Oh my gosh, I love that. And so, um, yeah, gaming is global and we certainly are a global company and, and we love the fact that's 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 the nature of the business for sure. And we love to hear that, you know, the industry is going to collaborate to do that too. So um, we haven't heard from Mishi yet. And it's, by the way, if if, uh, if nobody knows Mishi, she's kind of an incredible talent and it's an in insane coup for us to get her here uh, because she's super busy. She has multiple companies going on um, as a CEO of 1336 Studios. Her forward thinking game is really, you know, pushing the boundaries of leveraging advanced technology, but kind of, fantastic and that gamers love. So we're really thankful you're here, Mishi. Um, what do you think about all this? I'm blessing. <laughs> what do you think about all this? I mean, we're talking about, you know, blah, 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 advertising and standards and stuff that's maybe not so exciting, but this is the underpinning for driving revenue for game developers. And, you know, we've been driving revenue for game developers, but we want to get this right. We want to put the gamer at the center and we want to make sure that game developers um, and studios are are really at the center. So what do you think about, you know, kind of all this and what are those imperatives that we need to keep in mind as the industry um, so that we do it right? I actually really, really enjoyed Zoe's point and how she approached it with what is a casual gamer? How does it different? How, how is the value different from a really, really uh, immersed gamer? And I really like the fact that the industry is looking at those as measurements. I think I speak for most developers when we say we are really excited about the opportunity. I mean, even even for our most casual player, right, then we would have revenue coming in. And that's really exciting. But at the same time, we are so obsessed with the content that we're providing, the entertainment side of it, and we really want the game experience to to maintain the standard we set for it. And I think that's uh, most of the, if, if there was any hesitation, that would be it. But just hearing how the game industry, how the advertisement industry is thinking about this side of game advertisement is really, really encouraging. And I'm so excited to explore this. Awesome, Misi. You know, one of the lessons you've taught me in the short time that we've, you know, known each other is the idea that you, you try to talk to other, at least up and coming game developers, uh, about the idea that they really need to own this that they're in yes. control. And can you talk a bit about that, about leaning forward versus, you know, leaning back in this development process and celebrating it and making it better because of that? Yes, I would love to. And I really do believe this too, Carrie. Think of game developers as influencers. We really care about the people we're providing content for, but we also, pro we also want the opportunity of, of putting something in front of them that we believe in. And you, and, and when the influencer is really, really immersed with that brand and they believe in it and they really like it and they offer that content to their users, owning it, it creates a much, much more positive experience. And 
I believe that this is more important than than just exposing it. So it's it, ha it to me it has to be a lot more than just slapping on a banner and almost being like ashamed of it. No, I think we need to and we need to embrace it. We need to own it and we need to have so much fun with it. Um, just the other day we were. Uh, thinking about the possibility of, of collaborating through frame play with a brand. And what we did was we went out, we bought a bunch of their products, we stocked the office and we had we, we posted it on social media. Our users were having fun with it. So it goes beyond just what we're putting in the game, but we really believe in this product and we're so excited about it. And that is what will get the users excited. And then if we're supporting it and reminding the users with the banners, then that creates the perfect storm. Yeah. Oh my that gosh. Is I, how love I, that. See it. <laughs> I love it. And you know what? That's right. Because because you are the creators of this incredible immersive experience. And you know, when and if a game developer decides to place an ad inside the game, lean in and and celebrate it and own it. On that note, I want to swing back to Sarah for a minute. And maybe you know, we all can chime in too, Zoe. Um, I want to talk about the idea of custom versus scale in our last couple minutes. Um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of experiences that we've seen where we've seen a lot of custom integrations within games, and they've been you know arguably very well done for the most part. Um, and I can that's not going to go away. And so that's something where you have to maybe hard code something or do something very unique to do breakthrough. Uh, it might be only for one game. And then there's the idea of scale and having a, a foundational type of uh, ad units, which is what the IAB basically supports in terms of its standards um, to support basically the reach and frequency that you need for a brand. So Sarah, can you first talk about the balance that you need to cast with custom and scale uh, in your world? And then maybe we can round it off with other, what other people think. Yeah, I mean, I think, Custom is probably the, the area that most brands that we speak to are super excited about. Like the idea that they might be able to integrate their product into a game, that you could play with it, that it could somehow plus up a, a player's experience. The fact that, you know, you could create a an Easter egg moment within a map that no one has experienced yet. And then you, you get to unlock something. Like this is something that we're really excited about um, and something that we speak frequently to, to brands about. And you know, we're still at the very early stages of how we start, you know, building out what genuine brand experiences look like in this new immersive world. Um, but that said, as with any campaign, you have to, you have to marry the, you know, the high end, high investment, you know, um, and probably takes a little bit more time and a bit more jumping through hoops to get live with those big immersive things with your constant always on raw of making sure that you're doing the basics right. And something that we'd like to talk about is that once you create these really highly immersive moments and you invite people to experience it with you, it means that all of the other media that they then see off the back of that is working harder for you. So if you've just had an amazing experience where you've walked mm -hmm. into like a brand's world or they've provided you with some sort of plus up, the next time you see them in a game, you're going to feel like they have more permission to be there because they've already they've already brought about some sort of narrative as to the reason they are there. And I think the issue that we sometimes face with brands, and, and to be fair, it's, a, it's an area where they get nervous, is this idea of just immediately entering into gaming without kind of providing that background narrative or that permission to be there, because then that's when you're worried that a brand is just shoehorning their way in without really being additive to that experience. So I think, you know, as with any advertising campaign, that happy mixture of doing something fun, standing out, getting noticed as a brand, and then making sure you're doing the basics right to maximize the impact of that investment is 100% the way to go. Yeah, and, and um, I love that you said that, and we had talked about that before, and I think what's, qual what's quality about that is you'll have, you know, people like Mishi, who's constantly pushing the envelope and innovating, you know, that's what we love about her and our partnership, and then you've got Zoe that represents, of course, custom things, but also scale, and, and scaling the industry all work together, and, you know, for, for us, we believe in the, oh, hello, are you there? We can hear you. 
Oh, good. My my camera just went off for a minute. For us, we believe in the in the balance of both of those things, custom and scale. And I think with that, we're almost out of time. Um, I, I'd love to wrap up first by thanking our panelists. I, I feel incredibly blessed. We were able to um, just get this, you know, talented group of people together that could represent all of the industry perspectives. I think that we'll see each other again uh, because we have to talk about creative next, maybe in another session. Um, and, you know, we're just blessed to work in this industry that is the most beautiful marriage of creative um, experience and technology and fun. Uh, it's about play. And it's about um, uh, games and who, who wouldn't love that. But let's put the gamers at the center and let's get the experience right. And I think then them will all win the game. So with that, uh, I'll, I'll send it back to Michael.